what you are about to see, what you are about to witness, is a concert by Dr. Mastermind. That would be me. In 1987, in Portland, at the Starry Night Club, with Kurt James on guitar, Dean Castronovo on drums, Mondo playing bass. He was the he was a bass player for the band Mayhem and also in Poison Idea. And me jumping around on a trampoline looked like a fool. It's the only concert we did as this grouping. But uh, the album went to number one in uh, Europe for three months. It was on CBS, Sony, in Japan. Great drum solo, great guitar solo. These guys shred. And then uh, after this, Dean went off to play with Bad English, Tony McAlpine, Marty Friedman, and many more. He played on Holes Records and so many I can't list. Kurt, he played with Graham Bonnet, and he was in Striper for a little while. And... Um, he was in Black Sheep, and he was the first guitar player in a band called Project Driver, which had Tommy Aldridge and Rudy Sarzo. Later on, Tony McAlpine took that over. He was a guitar player in Steeler. He, he actually replaced Ingve. He was the only guy that could replace Ingve. So it's it was great, man. Good fun. And uh, if you want Dr. Mastermind CD, I have a the original one with live cuts on it from this concert actually and also um, I made like five other CDs under the Dr. Mastermind name so if you like that it's, uh, go to usmetal.com and a t-shirt we've got t-shirts and CDs at usmetal.com it's actually you buy them on eBay US Metal Mat is my name on eBay. And uh, I'll see you next time on U.S. Metal TV.
James is uh, one amazing guitar player and bass player. And we got to talk to him, and he did a little shredding for us. And we asked him, what is it like to work with Matt McCourt? Well, actually, we're, we're gearing towards this uh, Monterey Metal Fest. Uh, pretty cool thing, man. It's the uh, Coca-Cola Auditorium in Monterey, Mexico. Seats about, oh, 20,000 or so. They, they expect a pretty full turnout because the metalheads down there are just rabid. They've been bitten by the, the wild dog, and they are foaming at the mouth for metal. Yeah. So... Uh, uh, yeah, man, uh, Lemmy's gonna be there, dude. I, I'll be hanging with Lemmy. I'll be learning some uh, tricks of the trade from the master himself. You know, you know how, how to do it and survive. You know? I plan on getting as toxic as he is in, in surviving. That's the point. That's the whole point of metal. Well, you know, Lemmy's blood. They tried to change Lemmy's blood, but the fresh blood would have killed him, according to his biography, White Line Fever. So who else is on that bill? Is, is, is there a Danzig on that? Danzig, yeah, man. Now talk about some metal warriors. We're up against some stiff competition, but I think Neil's got a chance to show who's really who. Because Neil's got a set of pipes on him. He's got range and power that's just, you know, it's just one of those strange things. It's kind of like, like a uh, Daihatsu. It's just strange that the thing even runs, you know what I mean? It's like, when Neil gets on the stage, it's like, it's pretty amazing what kind of strange sounds come out of that uh, microphone at that point. So how would you compare the Neil Turbin band to, to uh, say, playing with Dr. Mastermind like he did last night at the, the Classic Metal Fest 5? Well, I, I would say that... What's the difference? The, a lot of the differences are that, well, Matt's, Matt's a gifted musician, you know. Neil's, Neil's a gifted vocalist, you know, and uh, playing with two gifted guys like that, you get to uh, shine in different areas. No, you know we're, I mean? we're talking it's about, like, the, like the, I mean like the music, is the music way different or is it, are you playing any old Anthrax songs by Oh yeah, we're playing old Anthrax songs, you know? it's almost like being in Anthrax, like, like playing with Matt last night was like being in Wild Dogs, you know, which I've never done before, never been in the band, How I felt like I was, I was continuing the legacy and now with playing with Neil, it's like I feel like I'm continuing the legacy of uh, Anthrax, of early Anthrax, which, by the way, from what I've heard so far, is the best Anthrax. So you're kind of like the proprietor and maybe the, the caretaker of um, the legends. Right, exactly. It's like what I'm doing is I'm, I'm like uh, presenting the uh, original formulae in a way that even the progenitors may be not able to do at this point in time. So, do you have any plans to put out any uh, records, any solo records, or any projects that you, it's all all the Kurt James? Well, actually, if I said no, I'd be a, a liar. No, so, so the answer to that is yes. Uh, actually... Do you have any solo CDs that you've recorded? Actually, I have three that are pressed at this point, and I have a, another one that's in production, and, uh, you know, it's just the tip of the iceberg, you know. I, I really see it like the floodgates. See, the thing is, is I've been in the industry, in the business, and everything that I've done and created has kind of just been kept under uh, lock and key. So as soon as I open the door, it's just going to flood out like crazy. Does that under lock and key by your, your choice, or...? Uh... No, it's actually, I don't think the industry has ever been quite ready for what I really have to offer, you know, because what I have to offer is kind of going to be a little unsettling for the people that are already up there, you know. They're, they're, they're kind of like, oh, he's good, but I'm glad he's, I'm glad, you know, he's not opening up for me, you know what I mean? That was the, that, I think that's been the big problem, is like, I've always been in an opening position, but nobody wants me to open for them because they don't, you know, they're a little bit, you know, they know what's going on. You know what I mean? That's right. So presentation, you know, like a, a unit that can. Another problem is, is the level of the stuff that I'm working with is kind of eclectic. If you know what I mean, it's hard to find one musician that can do 
all the different things that I like to do because I like to go from like gypsy, uh, gypsy ragtime jazz to you know hard metal to so, everything in between that, which is kind of like saying like the phone book. It's like I like to go from you know the A page to the Z page, you know, in music. So you'll have maybe uh, a number of different lineups, different drummers. On that would make for a, quite an interesting album, actually. Yeah, maybe I should do that. I, I'd say three drummers would be able to, to do it. You know, you got to get a guy that's like a metal guy and a guy that's like a, like more of a, you know, bebop drummer. And then another guy that's just a fusion guy. You know, it's, and I think there may be someone like Vinnie Caliuta that could do that. So I know Dave Mustaine just recorded with Vinnie Caliuta. So that might be a, a road that I should like pursue. Like say, hey man, you're the guy. Let's hook up. Hey, speaking of that, when it comes down to Megadeth or Metallica, what one are you? Well, I like Megadeth for the uh, just the the bigness of the you know the whole trip. You know, I think it's a big deal, and I dig big deals. So I dig Metallica because I think they're a bigger deal than Metallica. I mean, uh, yeah. What am I saying? Those two names kind of have an M in the beginning, so I get confused. So I think Ma Vishnu more than Motorhead. No, that's not what I were talking about. Are you a Beatles or an Elvis man? Right, I'm a Belvis fan. Am I a modder or a rocker? I think I'm a mocker. <laughs> Schumacher, that is. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, well, thanks a lot. No, but I want to say this about that. Uh, uh, Matt McCourt's uh, U.S. Metal Records is, is setting the pace. And... Uh, Tune in to uh, Turbin's website and check out what's going on with the uh, latest and that. And uh, that's kind of the cream of the crop as far as I'm concerned right now. Will you be, are you, your uh, CDs that are pressed, are they available like on your label or just directly from you? Exactly. Or, so you're in charge of everything. So that, yeah, that seems to be the trend today where, where uh, you make your own music and you're in charge of it, which I think is going to make music a much better and much more um, a creative voice, you know, for the individual. What, what do you do? You agree, or or would you? Are you the of the school that you need to sign with a major label and and go all through that? Well, I really think that what I'm trying to do, a major label wouldn't know what to do with it. So it's kind of well, maybe, they, maybe I've heard some of the stuff. It's maybe uh, like major, like a jazz label. Yeah, well, even that, you know, it's like, it's it's been the story of my entire life ever since I was in high school. It's like, the jazz people don't know how to react because they go, oh, he's too rock. And then the rock guys go, oh, he's too jazz. It's like, I've always been like like a musical misfit in a way because I I do what I do and I don't just follow like somebody else's idea of what I should be doing. It's like... I am me, and I, I kind of stick to that. Kind of a, a rebel, you know what I mean? If you could pick three guitar players that have developed your style that you've taken from, I know there's probably more, but the three oh. main influences, who would you cite as your main influences? Well, uh, at this point in time, I would pick three totally diverse guys. I mean, like Jimi Hendrix, to me, was the guy that made the Stratocaster what, you know, he opened the door. You know, for the strap. Okay, how about number two? Uh, number two, I'd have to go into a, uh, like, more of a, um, a jazz world. I think Joe McLaughlin is actually the guy that just opened the doors for a guitar player to play with incredible technique and still reach a big audience. And, and... It, you know, it's it's obvious that you've got Uli Roth in, in your style somewhere. Yeah, actually, I met Uli Roth uh, not too long ago, and the more I I listen to music, the more I, I just find myself becoming into like that kind of a a vibe because he he's in the Jimmy. You know, I think the common denominator between a lot of people in music is Jimmy. Jimmy's like this incredible like cornerstone in music, you know, I mean, it's like, I don't think anybody can can do, it's like the Beatles and Jimi Hendrix, you know what I mean, it's like, you know, everybody likes the Beatles and Jimi Hendrix. Well, if you go and hang out with Lemmy, Lemmy, to Lemmy there is no other guitar player that's 
better than Jimi Hendrix ever in the history of music. And without him, right. you, you wouldn't have any of these guys today. He thinks Randy Rhodes was, you know, he wasn't that great until he died. And, um, but Hendrix to him is everything. You might have something in common when you hang out. Right. Well, you know, he's got a point there. You know, I, I feel the same way, you know. Um, he said he beat him at, at uh, Asteroids and Chess all across the country when they were on the tour. He said he's a good, he's a good guitar player, but no Hendrix. Now, what, what about Asteroids and Chess? What? He said he played Chess with Randy Rhodes when they were on tour with Ozzy, and he beat him at Chess all the way across America. He said he's a hell of a nice guy, but way overrated for a guitar player. What do you think about that? Uh, Randy Rhodes seems to be the guy everybody cites as like the, the turning point. That's kind of weird, man, because, you know, I come from that area. Randy Rhodes was from Glendale, and I'm from uh, Pasadena. And out of all the Pasadena guitar players, you know, there's like a little, like a, you know, like a school of Pasadena guitar playing. And uh, like uh, Carlos Cavazzo, Randy Rhodes... Um, even George Lynch, he was more South Bay. But at the time, I mean, Eddie Van Halen was so far superior to Randy Rhodes at the time uh, that it was hard to, like, you know, put him in the same category as someone like Hendrix or, or even Van Halen. But listening back to his music, he, he was a, a cool guy because he, he was kind of like putting composition with classical, and, you know, he was a thoughtful guy, you know, he's a good composer. Did you know Randy Rhodes? Actually, no, I never got to meet him, but the feeling that I got from his playing never, ever even came close to Jimi Hendrix or Eddie Van Halen, you know, and it was like, he's good for what he does, but that was it. It was like, you know, it was no big deal. It was just some guy that was kind of, a little bit, you know... A little bit more than the average... Right, yeah, but definitely, I mean, unfortunately, and, it, and it, 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 I, I don't want to make any enemies at this point, because I know there's people that just, you know, he's cool, you know, but I know personally, I know guys that I consider that make me feel like, wow. Like Chris Poland, for instance, I would say his music has always been head and shoulders above Randy Rhodes. Because he's doing something completely original and with feeling and and a sound and a touch. Do, do you do you talk to Chris Poland recently? Have you do you know yeah. him? Have you seen him recently? Yeah. Because we've emailed him but never got anything back. Right. I could probably you know help. He you was my that. favorite uh, guitar player from Megadeth. That was the Megadeth for me. Yeah, and and when and you then, know I know Marty Freeman. Hi Marty, what's up? You know. Marty emailed me a couple weeks ago. Mark, Marty, man, what a He's guy, nice. man. Him and Jason uh, were really close buddies of mine at the time. Well, not extremely close, but we were, you know, hanging in the same circles. Because the, you know, they were putting out records when the Dr. Mastermind album came out. That's correct. correct. In fact, I think one of those records came out in the same release batch oh, on okay. Shrapnel. And, uh, and Dean Castronova, the drummer on Dr. Mastermind, played on that album also. Right. Have you have you played much with Dean Castronovo? Uh, just just what the, with the mastermind. Just a, yeah, that's it. Do you know any other? Or what? Who's your favorite drummer? If you if you could pick anybody to be in your band, say just one, who would you pick? And they were available. Well, that's kind of a tough call because um, what I what I like in drumming is someone that's sensitive to the music, that has a feeling that it's not like catch up with me, you know what I mean? It's like I like musicians that are sensitive, they listen and they kind of like play to the surroundings and, and there's a lot of great musicians, um, I don't want to mention any names, but it's like my way or the highway type of thing, you know what I mean? And, and that's not right. Now that almost sounds like Matt, but <laughs> that's just his business aspect from what I get. He's kind of down to, he's a funny guy when he's funny. Right. But, uh... No, musically, I don't feel No, I mean, uh, pick a name. Like, name somebody. If, well, like, any, like, like to me, I mean, you know, it might not work in the situation I want to do now, but, you know, Lenny White is, is like, the guy that I've heard his records. Um, 
you know, I prefer the, the fusion type of drumming, you know, uh, like Billy Cobham, Lenny White, um, you know, those kind of guys. You know, which even the guy from uh, Dave Matthews' band, I think his feel and touch on the drums is just incredible. Carter Buford or whatever, however you pronounce it. We were just in downtown Chicago, and we could see where he dumped his bus. <laughs> oh, that's where it happened? Yeah. And, and the... The graded yeah, but overpass is 10 or 12 feet above, so these people must have just got drenched. Juiced, yeah. Yeah. Now, now, the thing is, is, whose call is that? Is that the driver's call, or is it is Dave Matthews himself saying, now is the time to dump our tank? That would probably be the driver. Yeah. I, I would suspect that nobody in the band was really, you know, involved. To give them a shit shower. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe David Matthews will write a, a song about that. Yeah. There's a shit shower uh, yeah. all over me. McCordon, I want to invite you to usmetal.com. That's a website, and you can buy T-shirts from Dr. Mastermind, T-shirts from Wild Dogs, and Mayhem, and CDs, too. I've also got some caps, baseball hats with U.S. Metal records on them. Please visit me. I'm lonely. Boom. So have a good time all the time, and I will see you when I see you when you see me next. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, 
right, now let's get fucking down to business. That's the We're going to do it the right way or not at all. Won't you help? These animals need your help. They were once animal stars, actors, but now they can't find work. They're broke, they're hungry, they're it's lonely. So cold out here. They need your help. All we need is a little love. Your donation of $100 or more will help them out a lot. Please donate to the Out of Work Animal Association today. Please, won't you help? We're lonely, we're depressed, and we're hungry. It's up to you to save our life. Thank you. Please donate to the Out of Work Animal Association. Please, won't you help?